G'day! Wombat here, and in today's edition of Budget Gear, we're going to take a look at the MG15FX by Marshall. So before we get started, I'm not going to get into whether or not this is an actual Marshall amp, whether it actually sounds like a Marshall, whether it doesn't. I'm not going to touch that debate at all. These, as you probably are aware, are a solid state amplifier. They are made by Marshall. And what we're going to focus on is whether or not this sounds any good and if it's usable. So that's what we're going to focus on. So let's get that out of the way right from the start. You can make up your own mind if you think it's going to be a real Marshall or not. We're just going to focus on how this sounds as an amplifier in its own right. So the MG15FX is their small combo solid state amplifier for home practice and for, you know, beginner guitarists and things like that. It is technically a four channel amplifier. And I say technically because whilst it does have four channels, it only has two channel changing buttons, which means that um, each two of those channels each share a button, a push-push button. So um, your clean channel button is also the button you push to get to crunch, and if you push it again, it goes back to clean. Uh, the same thing with the overdrive one and overdrive two, they share a button. So you push it, it's overdrive one, you push it again, it's overdrive two, you push it again, it's overdrive one. So it is a four channel amp, but I say technically because there's only two buttons. So you can't, um, you know, add an overdrive to anything or, or that sort of thing. It just is what it is. So the other thing is it's got built-in effects, which I think is really, really good and probably something really necessary for this kind of an amp for beginners and for home practice. Um, it, it has five effects. Um, it has a sweeping knob for a chorus, a phaser, delay, and a flanger, and then it has a dedicated reverb knob as well, which I think is a great idea because reverb is something that um, a lot of us use pretty much all the time. Um, you know, delay could also have that argument as well, but I don't use delay very often, um, but I will use reverb just about all of the time. So we're all different, but I think it's a great idea to have that as its own dedicated knob. Um, across the front panel here, and I will get some shots of the front panel so you can see this a little bit better, we have um, the knobs, uh, it starts with a gain, the bass, middle and treble, uh, a re the dedicated reverb knob, um, a volume, the FX knob with the four of effects around that, um, and then a master volume as well. So it's really well situated for home practice. You can crank the volume on a channel um, and the gain on a channel to try and give it a bit more push, but you can keep the volume down to the master volume, which I think is a really, really good idea. Inside the little box of joy is an eight inch custom speaker. Um, Custom, I don't know if that's the brand. Uh, they're not giving you any details on the brand or who actually makes it. So um, it could just simply be a custom speaker that they've had made for this particular amp, or it could just be a custom branded speaker. I haven't opened it up and it, it is a closed back so you can't see. Um, so yeah, that's what it is. It's an eight inch speaker as you would expect in this style of an amp and this kind of a size. It also has an inbuilt tuner a line in, a head and a headphone jack, so all of that sort of rounds out the package that is the MG series. Um, these things have been used forever and there's lots of debate on if they're any good. In fact, the reason I'm doing this video on this particular amp is because I've heard really mixed reviews about it. Some reviews, this is fabulous. Some reviews, this is really dodgy. So I thought I'd find out for myself. So here we are. So, how did it perform and how did it sound? Well, let's start with the clean channel. I was absolutely amazed that the clean channel sounded so good. It sounded really quite good. It was very usable, quite musical. 
Um, we're not talking, um, you know, like a Fender valve amp kind of clean here, but it is nice, quite usable. It was really good. Um, plenty of headroom, so winding the gain up really didn't affect it too much. Um, I was thinking, you know, if I could get a blues tone out of winding that gain on the clean channel, it didn't really do that too much. Um, push the button, we end up into the, the crunch channel. Um, the crunch channel was a little disappointing, I've got to say. It, um, it did exactly what it says on the box, crunch. Um, and it wasn't bad. I mean, you could get some light bluesy kind of tones out of it with the gain knob right the way down. Um, but it never really got where I like a rock style crunch to go. Um, it almost got there, just not quite. So moving over to the other two channels, the Overdrive 1. Now the Overdrive 1 was nice. It did crunch better than the crunch channel in my opinion. So I quite liked the Overdrive 1 channel. Um, it, it allowed me to do some bluesy tones. It allowed me to do uh, some good rock tones. It sounded great. Um, in fact, I would use the OD1 channel more than I'd use the Crunch channel for both of those kinds of things on this particular amp. Hitting the button onto the Overdrive 2 channel, well, this just kept the fun going and we ended up with a great rock tone as we started to wind the gain up. It really sounded quite good. Now, I was expecting this, being a bit of a Marshall fan, I was expecting this to be a terrible sounding amp, but looking at it as just an amp in its own right, and, and how that sounds just on its own, not comparing it with any other Marshalls or anything else, it didn't do too badly. It sounded pretty good. So I was quite pleasantly surprised. I thought, let's see if we can get this sucker to do some metal. So cranked everything I could find to try and push it into that metal territory, and it never got there. It just did not get there. This is a decent sounding rock, um, maybe some blues and clean amplifier for home use, it never really did the metal thing. So I was a little disappointed with that, um, but that is what it is. It just never quite got there. So with that said, um, the rock tones were still pretty good. So I was pretty pleased with that. So let's have a look at the effects now. The effects, the reverb itself, um, there is so much reverb on tap with this amplifier. I mean, it just went on forever. Um, I found that I was using probably the first quarter of the dial to get the reverb tones that I like. Um, anything past that, it just got way too big, way too fast. And that seems to be a theme with this amplifier as far as the effects are concerned. Because when we start looking at the chorus and the phaser, and the delay and the flanger, um, you've got all those four effects crowded around one knob and it goes from very little to almost nothing to way too much with not much movement. Um, it was really difficult to dial good tones in on the effects. The effects sounded fine, but they were hard to dial in because it didn't take a lot of movement. The actual really usable type of effect in most instances is very tiny. Um, and, and it was tiny, tiny little movements to, to really try and dial it in. So that took a little while. I did get there but it took a little while and some fiddling to actually get that thing, which for a beginner style amp can be a bit problematic. Um, you know, beginners often use way too much effect in the first place um, because they just don't have that experience to know better. So that is something that I hope they fix. Now the, the newest versions of these are starting to hit the market. They're called the Gold Series. Um, so hopefully on those ones, they've kind of fixed that up a bit, but the, the sweep was really wide, but tiny little movement took it from almost nothing to way unusable. So that's that's a, a down a down side of this particular amp. So all in all though, um, if you're looking for a, a cheaper amp, and when I do say cheap, these things run at around the 250-ish dollar mark. Uh, that's Australian dollars, of course. Um, th there are other amps out there that it's competing against, um, but it doesn't do too badly. But if you're looking for a, a, just a home use amp that you can just you know chuck a guitar into and get some practice done, or um, you're running a no-name amp that comes with a pack and you want to upgrade to something a little bit better, this might be worth looking at. It depends on on sort of you know what you're looking for in an amp. If you want metal, 
this isn't your your guy because it's just not going to get it done but if you're looking for rock tones and a nice clean tone this would you know just do the job to your heart's content so there you are that is the mg um 15 fx by marshall um take my word for it don't take my word for it totally up to you but if you want go and check one out for yourself and see what you think all right, so that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And um, as always, rock on, guys.